Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Into the Terminal. Today, we're going to be talking about Secure Shell or SSH. Uh, Nate, why don't we uh, jump into the terminal? We're going to go over some basics. I mean, if you've ever touched a Linux box in the past 20 years, you've probably touched SSH if you've connected to it remotely to do any kind of administration. But we like to start with the basics in the critical paths. I've got a RHEL client and a RHEL server. They're both RHEL 9. What I'm going to do is connect from the client to the server, simply enough, using SSH. Now, this is pretty simple. Command is just SSH. And then there's a couple different syntaxes you could use to get the same thing done. But the one I like to use is the username you're going to connect with. In this case, the username is RHEL. And then at says, what server am I connecting to? I have a host name set up in my Etsy host file, which will connect me to the server. The server's name is also RHEL. That looks really cryptic there, but imagine rel would be like Nate, and the second rel would be, you know, server.example.com. Okay, now it's going to ask you to accept the fingerprint, the authenticity of the server you're connecting to. Now this, we're going to talk a little more about this in the deeper dive, but this is the key that identifies the server I'm connecting to. It'll use this later to identify that server again the next time you connect to it. So we're going to say, yep. You only have to accept that the first time you connect. True. Right. Unless it changes. But again, we're going to talk about that later. And then you'll see it's asking me for a password. We're going to talk about different ways to authenticate later as well. This is kind of like the basic out of the box way you're going to find SSH. So in this case, I'm going to put in my super secure password. And I'm going to do it again because apparently I can't type. <laughs> there we go. Now we're connected to my server. You can see I'm connected as the rel user, rel at rel, right? I'm going to clear the screen there. And you'll see, look at that. I've got, there's a file there, which you might guess is part of my next example. <laughs> but there you go. Just as simple. Now, what I've done here is I've connected to my remote system. This communication is encrypted. Again, we're going to talk about how that works a little bit more in the deeper dive. I can issue commands, type private things. I can do all kinds of stuff and nobody can spy on me unless they've done some really cool trickery to be able to spy on my SSH session. So I'm gonna log back out of this session. So the next thing I'm gonna show is you can also move files over the same, the same mechanisms, right? And there's two ways to do that currently on RHEL 9. In fact, on RHEL 8 and 7 and really way back, there's two tools you can use to get that done. There's SCP and SFTP. We're going to talk a little bit about the differences, especially as it as it pertains to RHEL 9, because there were some changes that came with RHEL 9. I'm going to show you both just to show you that they're really, really similar on RHEL 9. You might even call them identical. The old school way, SCP, and then we're going to use that same format, RHEL at RHEL, colon now, and then we're going to specify a path for the file we want to copy. Right? So this works very similar to the copy command in Linux, where you do copy and then source and the destination. In this case, my source is a remote file on this server called rel. And I'm going to connect as the user rel. Right? Now, the file was called file1. It's in my home directory. SCP, SFTP, they're both smart enough to know that. They'll use a relative path. If it's somewhere else in the file system, you just specify the absolute path. You can even use some fast shortcuts like tilde to denote home directories and things like that. So that's the source. And then destination, we're going to copy it right here. And in fact, I could even specify a file name. So I stopped. <laughs> All right, let's get my command going again here. Let me clear the screen. SCP rel at rel. And then, of course, the source file, file one. And then we can, as I was saying, as I got dropped off, we can actually specify where we want to copy it to. I could call it file2 locally if I wanted to, right? So hit enter. Again, it asks for rel's password. Let's see if I can get it right on the first try this time. There we go. And now we're going to have file2 here, right? Here it is, which is file1 on the source. It's now in the destination. It's called file2. Now, I said there's another tool to get this done. That's called SFTP, right? Uh, in rel9, they're the exact same tool. I think SCP was deprecated or removed, and SFTP is replacing it, right? So, so that's a bit. Go ahead. A tool that's been deprecated, it's the backend transfer mechanism. SCP, the command, still exists. It's just yes. using a transfer mechanism identical to SFTP. 
And right, right. Jump to SFTP, would you mind recalling your SCP command for me? Sure. Um, I did want to point out one thing. So uh, Nate mentioned SCP works like copy, where mm -hmm. if your source file and destination file are the arguments passed, Nate specified his source file was remote. And then it basically contacted that remote machine and pulled the file to his local machine. If you flip-flop that, you can take files from your local machine and push them onto remote machines. Yeah. Um, I could swap that for the SFTP example, if you'd like. So we're going to SC file two, and then specify a remote location, rel uh, at rel colon, and I don't want to overwrite file one. If I do it just like that, it'll keep the file name the way it is on the source and place it on the destination. So if I do this, Oh, does it not work with us with SFTP in the same way? It should, shouldn't it? I, See what I, happens I, when you go off script? Exactly. <laughs> We're going to use the other example, which you're going to see if we just SFTP, just replace SCP with SFTP. It'll take the remote file and place it at a local file. We're going to call it file three. To Scott's suggestion, if we use SCP, and I know this works, I used to do it all the time. If we take file two, no, file two, and we get, you say rel at rel colon, and then we'll call it file four, it'll copy the local file to the destination. This one's working like you expected. This is one of the differences between SFTP and SS SCP. So, all right, so now you've seen all the ways that you can move files back and forth. Try not to use SFTP to copy a local file to a remote. There must be a different syntax to make that work, unless I typoed something and didn't realize it. I don't think I did. But that's our examples for moving things around. Like I said, super basic. We're going to get a little more deeper in the deeper dive because that's what it's for. Indeed.